placed in the price and operated by a sovereign act of God. It was this duplicity of definition that was being given. There was the Apostle Paul on this side that is saying these gifts belong in the church by a sovereign act of the Holy Ghost. But there was these Corinthians saying, we come behind in no gift and we operate them when we want to operate them. We use them when we want to use them. We operate them as we like. Now this duplicity is noted here in many ways in this section of Paul's letter. But I want you to notice a particular metaphor here that involves the sounds of certain musical instruments that he uses. Certain musical instruments. They are the pipe, harp, and the trumpet. Now Paul makes it clear that a distinction must be made in the sounds so that there be no uncertain understanding as to what the sound was. For the sounds ranged all the way from a pipe music to dance by and joy to the sound of war. And he's saying there has to be a distinction made in the sounds of what's going on here. We must recognize not only the difference in the sounds of the instrument, but the message those sounds convey to us. We must know that. Young people, you're going to face a Jesus terrorist. One of the greatest outpourings of the Holy Spirit since Pentecost and the greatest apostasy ever, ever in Roach. Jesus said if it were possible, the very elect would be deceived by the deception. Why is that so? Because they'll imitate the Holy Spirit. Man has never been so brazen as he is in this hour. I mean to brazenly imitate the Holy Spirit. Listen, I said here the other morning, when those, when those uh, Athenians warred against Troy for ten years, amen, they plundered through, burned, tried, never could crack it. But one day when they woke up those folks in Troy and looked out, there is a wooden horse, a gift saying that we've left. But when they pulled it on the inside and got drunk celebrating, they opened the belly of the horse and the devil's on the inside. He opened the gate and all, the, all but two people died in that city. Amen. Pentecost for 60 years withstood the erosion of that world and the compromise of the word of God. But we woke up one morning and there's a tongue-talking horse out our gate and we let him in without a question. Amen. Let him in without a question. Just because he could imitate what we believe. Amen. Oh, yes, sir. I'm going to show you if it takes me all morning. Amen. The folks will lose us on this television. Why this happened? Why this happened? Listen, we must recognize not only the sounds of the instrument, but the message they bring. There is a biblical message we must accept. There's a barbarian jargon that we must reject. Paul said that. He said, if they don't understand you, you're a barbarian. There is a biblical message to be given. There is a devilish jargon that must be rejected, ladies and gentlemen, in this late hour. Amen. The sound of the Corinthian, the church as a whole was that the Holy Ghost is in, and his attendant gifts are subject to the volitional use of man. The teaching and practices implied that God could be manipulated by man. Speak in tongues at will. Declare any service to be a miracle service. That you could tell the cloud where to go, when to go, and how to go. All of this become a part of the operation of the human in that church. Listen, the sound of Paul was, these gifts are the sovereign hand of God. He dist distributes them severally as he will. It remains ever true, and you hear what I'm going to say. It remains ever true that we must not follow the errors that result from the constant mutation of sin. No matter how successful it may appear, yet we must not fight against the truths that emerge from the constant action of a sovereign God through the centuries. I must know, ladies and gentlemen, what is and what isn't. Somewhere in this matter, we are taught 
that every Christian must make progress in keeping up with the mutation of sin in his generation. Yet he must retain a changeless biblical integrity against change that leads to compromise of the word of God in any age. He must maintain that. This is a delicate balance. I know that. This is a delicate balance of position between, between progress without biblical change and change often honorable within itself without compromise. We must believe in progress. Because we believe that God is moving by His will through history, bringing us to a climax of what He intended all the time. I must believe in progress. All of us as a church, however, that progress must be made on a biblical base without compromise. For we also believe that men are moving with Satan and their own will through the same history. Amen. Amen. Through the same history. Standing supreme and beyond all, all, beyond all recognition of sin error, its species and its mutations are Jesus Christ, the truth, the changeless Lord Jesus and his word. He stands towering over the wrecks of time and all the changes produced by sin and compromise. He stands there changeless above it all. Listen. To know error without knowing truth is to know disease without knowing the cure. To know error, to be content to know truth without a recognition, recognition of the various manifestations of the errors of our time is to be subject, is to be naive and deceived as well. To know this, we should not have guessed and certainly would never have designed it. My mind, I sat yesterday a long time with this thought. We would never have guessed, and certainly no human being would ever have desired it, that in the last days we would need a final test, such as knowing the true Christ in the great flourishing of a neo-Christianity. Who would ever believed that that would be the greatest test you would have, would be to know the real Christ in a time when millions are saying we're in a revival? Who would ever have guessed such a thing. But such is the way it is. Such is the way it is. But let me tell you, the great emphasis in Corinth and in the now should have been upon love, agape, the word love, which could be entitled and interpreted by Paul himself it was as a more excellent way. You hear me? You see the emphasis at Corinth had been placed right on love or the more excellent way or someone said it really means road. Amen. In other words, instead of charismatics, the emphasis should have been character. Amen. Instead, instead of charismatics, if the emphasis had been character, then the problems that we face all along the line when I was birthed into this thing 37 years ago, the message was a message of holiness, ladies and gentlemen. The gifts worked beautifully. Amen. People were healed more easily than they are now. But the message of that time was, was upon the character of the Christian. Amen. And I can tell you nothing ever produced a specimen of Christianity like an old-fashioned baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing. Amen. All holiness is of God. Listen. God intended Christian character, not Pentecostal charismatics. Raise your hand for a moment. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 